What's up, everybody? I'm Dangani Deep, and I'm joined by my friends at Elgato. This is uh, Steggy. What up? And Phil. Hello. All of their social media and stuff links are in the description down below. If you ever have had a problem with an Elgato device, it's been Phil helping you, probably. Maybe not personally, but like in spirit. <laughs> yeah, the spirit He's got a help. team. He's definitely yeah. been my helper <laughs> when I was trying to do weird stuff with multiple Elgatos before it was officially supported and all of that stuff. It was all Phil. Um, Steggy does all the dank tweets, so uh, he's been doing that stuff. And today we're doing another PC build video, but this one's something very, very special because we're gonna put everything you see on this table here, so uh, everything you see here into this. This is the Dan A4 SFX case. It's the smallest mini ITX case on the market that fits a full length graphics card, but we're not just putting a full length graphic card in, we're putting this, with, which is the Cortana 1070 in it, and we're putting a 4K60 Pro in it so that we can stream on the go. This is completely portable. Uh, I'm not putting any liquid cooling in it for a reason, which is that I want to be able to take it on a plane. And it's going to be my completely portable streaming and recording setup. I can record 4K on the go. I can Ooh. stream on the go in a case that is 7.25 liters. So I don't think... This is something that you guys have heard a lot, right, at events, that streamers saying, I go to events and... I can't afford to go to an event for seven days because then that seven days I'm yep. not streaming, I'm losing income for seven days and the event's costing me money. So an event might only cost me two grand to go to, but it's actually costing me six grand because I'm losing an entire week of streaming. Yeah. This is aiming to fix that problem. So when it comes to the parts in this system, we're going for 16 gigs of RAM. That should be enough uh, because it's just for streaming uh, and streaming only takes two to three gigs of RAM. Then Windows takes two gigs. You know, 16 gigs is overkill. We could go to 32 if we wanted to. Uh, you would need to get two 16 gig sticks, but that's up to you. We've got a 250 gigabyte M.2 hard drive because I love having Windows on M.2. This is for me. I don't need it. There's a one terabyte SSD in here actually already because I needed to transport it from the UK, but you don't need it, but I want it. It also makes your restarts really, really quick. Yeah, yeah, if something crashes, you know, or anything goes wrong. We've gone for what I think is the best Mini ITX uh, for an A700K on the market, which is ASRock, they make the best Mini stuff. You know, Asus generally, anything above ATX, but ASRock for Mini is just so, so good. I've got one thing that I prepared earlier, which is a delidded 8700K. We've delidded it to say 15 degrees on temps, which in a case this small, Super important. That's quite amazing, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of hot metal is going inside a very small space. <laughs> yeah, so that's all. How do you cool all that? Yeah. So then you have to delid because you really, really need to push it. But that's not the average use case. So if you haven't delidded your processor at home, you're not doing anything wrong. You're absolutely fine. So I probably shouldn't insult Tim that much. We have a mini power supply. This is like a, a SFX form factor power supply, 700 watt, which is insane that that's. 700 watts on a mini power supply, it's platinum, it's silverstone, they do black magic to get it all in and then it works. Uh, and then the one other thing that I've done at home, I've taken the K199 from Dynatron and I've added the fan from the K129, which is sitting there dead, because we took the fan off it, which did involve drilling holes through the outer fins. This is something that I probably need to do a separate video talking you guys through if you want to copy this build exactly. Uh, but do it at your own risk. If you drill a hole in your <laughs> in your rather expensive pure copper block um, cooler, and then they don't accept it when you try and return it, that's not my why. that's not my fault. Yeah, I think your warranty will be voided <laughs> when you drill a hole. <laughs> yeah. when power tools are involved. I don't think that's the standard use case. So in order to get both the graphics card and the 4K60 Pro onto a mini ITX board, you need to do something called bifurcation. This is probably the most complex part of this build. I would encourage anybody who's doing this build and just needs. 1080p 60 doesn't need to record 4K on the go. Just use an Elgato HD 60s and put any old graphics card in the pre-installed riser that's in this case. That will work just fine. I just wanted to go completely over the top with these guys because we don't hang out much. And it's like, if we're gonna hang out and build a PC. Yeah, why not go over the yeah, top? Yeah, right? go over the pond <laughs> for this, okay? Yeah. So. And then finally, we're going to go with, um, once again, it's all about thermal performance in this tiny, tiny build with no fans in the case or anything. So we're going for Cryonaut Thermal Grizzly, which is the best thermal, that, don't buy it if you're just doing a regular build. Use the stock thermal paste that comes with it, that comes with your AIO, that's fine. But if you are doing a super high-end build, yes, Cryonaut Thermal Grizzly, best thermal paste you can get. Don't go with anything else. First things first with any PC that you're building is you want to put the uh, processor into your socket on your motherboard. And that Actually, is... Actually, one minute correction, and you've already done it, and that's why you forgot about it. This anti-static Oh, right, yeah, wristband. my anti-static wristband, which if you don't have this on, put it on, especially with a micro build like this. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to put the cooler on next. Well, that was uh, relatively painless compared to the dry run. I did a dry run yesterday to make it sure the parts yeah. fit together. Um, the dry one was unpleasant. How does it no, look on the back? Still could make a great YouTube well, thumbnail. I almost snapped oh, wow. my motherboard. That's, that's <laughs> interesting. Okay, so I've never seen... To... Yeah, that bracket layout. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that is really mm -hmm. interesting. Wait, is this a no standoff M.2 then? No, it has a standoff right there. Oh, it's brain stools. Yeah, wow, yeah. look at that. Look at Azrock coming through for us. Well, <laughs> that's actually really cool that they do it on the other side of the motherboard. I've never seen that before. But it's, it makes total it's sense. Space saving, it's right? done a little bit yeah. in, in the MITX builds. Like, s some of these Azrock builds have two slots for M.2s on the yeah. back. So you went with uh, dual channel 16 gigs, you said? Of yeah, RAM? dual channel 16 gigs. I know that 32, obviously, but with the current prices of RAM. This is a negative pressure build because we only have outgoing fans. We don't, we're not going to have any uh, intakes at all, which means yeah. this is going to get dusty. Almost feeling like I should have uh, cabled in <laughs> all of the power cables for this. Uh, oh, that's gonna be awful, yeah. Oh, you know what's crazy? Because of the orientation of this being this way round, because this was the only way round that we get the fan pointing the right way, everything crosses over each other. So the graphics is gonna start on this side and come this way, <laughs> and then <laughs> everything else starts on that side and comes this way. How? How do they expect it to go in on a thing lifting it up this much? Are you sure it's not supposed to go in on the other side? Like on the inside of it? Yeah, I'm sure. But that would work. I'm... And it's definitely meant to go on the inside of it. <laughs> So this is the bifurcating thing. It's gonna sit on top of these um, screws here. It's gonna have to sit there 3D for now. I am gonna 3D print a bracket that screws yeah. onto this and then goes through this. I guess the, the graphics graphics just flow, but the... the but the mounts for the graphic with the PCM. No, it'll it'll hold them for yeah, sure. Yeah, the it'll slot covers here. will the hold fact it. Is, yeah. It would be hard to mount a graphics card on its own in this, but with the Elgato also weighing less than a graphics card, but actually yeah. still screwing in, we should be all right. Uh, are you putting the Elgato on the outside facing or inside facing one? Uh, I want it on the outside for two reasons. One, because it looks nicer than the graphics card. And two, because the graphics card is a blower style graphics card. So, so long as the Elgato doesn't overlap the blower, which that. it doesn't, it's almost like they were made to go together That's in this system. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. It won't affect the thermal performance of this, but it will affect the thermal performance of this. And this actually gives it more space inside the case to move that air yeah. before it hits yeah. an obstacle. So. It's actually way better this way around, and I was worried that they all got a pro might be too long, but uh. That is not bad for that side. So we've got no. full airflow to the KFA. There. So the 4K60 Pro is getting the air yeah, it exactly. needs. It's getting all the air it needs. It's and you can actually cable manage a little time. bit down here <laughs> as well. Yeah, I will. I will cable manage down here. And that should actually be the PC built. Oh, that is a heavy box yeah, for the let size. Me see. Did not expect it to weigh wow, quite that, that much. Is... Yeah. So let's see. So when are our commissions open? You know, like you know. Is <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. We have one important. final piece. Yeah. There we go. We're gonna go see if it posts. We're gonna check out temps, all of that stuff. I'll put that in a different video. Thank you so much for watching this build, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. 
We might do a big uncut video in the description down below so you can hear all our discussion because we talked about a lot of stuff during this build. Definitely worth um, checking out. Yeah. Check out all of Elgato's social media because I promise you guys, I would not be where I am with YouTube today if they hadn't made their graphics card, their graphics card, their capture card. Oh, have I spoiled the future product? <laughs> <laughs> um, <Ooh. laughs> their capture cards. But thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. All right then, guys, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, you can click up here to see more videos of this type on my channel. If you want to check out something else a little bit different, then you can click down here. And if you want to see everything that I upload, you can click the subscribe button right here.